Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Peter. And uh, Peter, we got a supersized version of a classic here, don't we? Yep, we have the Fun Cub XL from Multiplex. Now, if you guys don't know anything about the Fun Cub, it came out about six years ago in a smaller mm -hmm. version, and it was quite iconic. Yep. You'd pretty much see one at every airfield, and it had a lot of really cool features and a lot of really cool characteristics. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing we have here is a 1.7 meter version of that. Yep. And uh, it's bigger. Yep, and this one actually looks more like a Cub, too. The other one, I'm yep. not really sure what it entirely looked like. It looked kind of like a Telemaster and some other aircraft put together. It was still neat aircraft, but this thing looks a lot more like its full-scale counterpart, yeah, it's, which looks it's, like a Super Cub or something. One really cool thing about Multiplex is they design for flight characteristics, not necessarily for scale. So mm -hmm. like their dogfighters and a lot of their other planes, they look like mashups more than actual scale yep. planes, but they perform amazing. And uh, you put this together really quick. How long did it take you? Uh, probably about uh, 20 minutes or less. About 20 minutes. And the hardware is incredible on this. Yes, yeah, so the hardware, you're definitely getting your bang for your buck when it comes to the hardware in this specific airplane. So you got these nice like snap locks and stuff for like, the wing struts and yeah. all that. No plastic struts. No plastic struts. Everything went together really smoothly. The only, my only minor gripe though, if some of you aren't really uh, very literate, the manual is all in words. There's no pictures whatsoever. That's terrible. I like pictures. Yeah, but all like pictures. if you can read, it's not a problem. That's cool. Well, a couple features I really like on this is this actually has lightweight, spongy wheels, mm -hmm. and the struts are uh, not plastic. They're uh, what, carbon fiber tube. Yep, the carbon fiber tube. And uh, the thing is built to take a beating. It almost reminds me of like a, a foam version of what they went after with the Bigfoot from 3D Hobby Shops. Mm -hmm. And uh, big planes can be intimidating, but our goal today is honestly, we're just going to go ahead and see what we can do to push the features, see how it compares to the original, and uh, maybe even uh, have Stefan try it out to, uh, to give the uh, newbies Sure. A chance to see how it goes. Yeah. Want to put it in the air? Let's go fly. All right, should I do take off with full flaps or just a normal takeoff? That's your call, man. I will go full flaps. Full flaps it is. <laughs> We're off the ground. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, we got to maiden this and test out a lot of the features, but we really didn't push the limits, did we? Yep. I just basically took it up, just tested the flaps, and just did a little bit of mild, mild hovering, and that was it. Are you running any expo on this or anything? Uh, no expo. So no you're full 100%. Is we'll it probably, touchy? It's actually not that touchy at all. It's, it's fairly smooth. All right, if you could compare a smaller plane, what would this feel like to you? Do you remember that Red Horizon uh, Cub thing? I forgot what it was called. Oh, the, the uh, Sport Cub. Yeah, the Sport yeah. Cub. It feels like that. Oh, it's, just cool. a, it's just a bigger, slipperier version it's, of it. It's 1.7 meters, but it doesn't feel big. Yep. And it fits in your car, which is real nice compared to the Carbon Z. Yeah, and for what it's worth, I drive a Toyota 4Runner. And this can fit in the fit in the back seat without taking uh, it apart. Well, I'm taking wings off. Yeah, if you if you have to put it together, oftentimes it kills the energy out of the field because it's just like, oh, I just want to go fly. You end up grabbing something smaller. How's it inverted? Inverted feels great. Feels fine. There's nothing special going on there. It's actually pretty predictable upside down. I don't need a lot of elevator to get it to fly upside down. Well, and you had to do something funny. We only have 2200s, and they give you a series connector yep. for uh, for two three cells. So so kudos to them for that. It's a really weird connector that you have to modify. Oh my gosh, that was close to the fan. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we only have 2200s. So the problem with that is it was a little tail heavy and you remedied that, didn't you? Yep, I threw a pair of channel locks in there. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, another uh, side note too, it comes with multiplex connectors for what it's worth, so you'll need to switch them out to something that you're probably using. I yeah. don't really know anyone personally that flies multiplex connectors. It's a really weird connector. Yeah. The only other beef I had with it is this is not a cheap plane. It's 400 bucks without battery uh, receiver ready. Yep. Uh, the quality's fantastic, but they didn't give us little LEDs. They give you all the wiring yeah. for the LEDs, but they sell it as an option. It is weird because they put all the wiring in there. They put the tracks, they put the uh, the light housings and everything, but they don't yeah. include with like a 10 cent LED, which is just a little bizarre yeah. in my opinion. How's it, how's it handle the skid? Very, very nice. Let's try to pull on knife edge. Oh, nice. Look oh, at yeah, that. It'll hold that. It'll hold the knife edge. It looks like it's barely coupling, too. Barely at all. Look how slow it's going. It, this thing does great. All right, you want to try it? Yeah, I'll right. first see if you can hover it. Okay. Let me bring around the pattern real fast. Full circle knife edge. That's pretty awesome, man. <laughs> all right, I'll hover it right in front of her faces. All right. Nice. Hovers, no problem. Oh, look at that. Look at that, yeah. I'm not the best at hovering, so I can't really do the, the torque spin I, things. I think you did pretty But awesome. I can just pop it up. I'm waiting for you to blow the Versacopter out of the air. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, the nice thing is we're all solid, mediocre pilots. Yep. So this is a really good indicator of you know how we could do. Yeah. If you can fly like, this is like a good, like, oh, get out of the way, Phantom. <laughs> This is like a good, like, probably second or third model. 
it, cool. it is a little bit intimidating, but the big size is make it makes it more what, predictable. Now, what about coordination? Like, Oftentimes, when you get to a cub, you yep. got to coordinate your uh, controls. In other words, you have adverse yaw, so you have to kick and rudder mm -hmm. to make it coordinated. Do you have to do that? Yes, you do have to do a little bit of that okay. because the plane is like no dihedral, so you will have to do some coordinated turns. So, why well, just hand it to you? There oh, you okay. Go. It's all yours. Yep. Hey, I'm flying a plane. Yep, big airplane. The thing that's really nice about this, it's kind of like in between like the uh, the Horizon gi Giant uh, Cub and some of the smaller park fire models. It's like a really good in between. I like the way it feels. It, it feels light. Yep. It feels like it's definitely got some authority because it is slippery in the air. But at the same time, it can slow right down. Nice. The rear flat spin. <laughs> I'm trying to. I like it. Mm -hmm. This would be a great tow plane too. And they do put a tow package in for this thing as well. Whoop. Well, that's up the first copter. <laughs> Tell you what, you mm -hmm. can definitely feel the weight. When mm -hmm. you throw that energy around, you gotta use power to get out of it. Yep. Because it's a little slippery, like you were almost at the point I was where right there, you could have <laughs> installed it. You were you were like about probably like two it, or three miles away from it. it. It feels it feels honestly like a foamy, so you wanna treat it like a foamy, but you have that inertia. I wanna do a touch and go. Try with the flaps, dump them all down. Oh, do you know do you wanna put them in three? I just wanna do a okay. side flip. Side flip. Nice. Oh my gosh. All right, she glides. Stall turn. Very nice. All right, which one's the flaps? Uh, this one, let me have your finger. This one right there. All right, no, not that one. Hang on. This one, push it all the way down. And that flaps oh down, gosh, pull it all the way up, and it comes up. Yeah, it, get, it gets a little squirrely with the rudder too, because when yeah. you add a flap, you do take a lot of the airflow away from that. So you guys will need to add a little bit more rudder when you're doing things with the flaps down. You alleviate all that lift from the wing, mm -hmm. so that when you stall, you drop like a rock. Yep. All right, one more time around. I all wanna. Right. It, you know, it's just fun. Yeah, fun cup. There you go. It, it is a, it is a fun cup. And man, it, that the knife, knife edge. Is, <laughs> is pretty, it's pretty great. That is awesome. All right, I'm terrible with hovering, so let's. What you'll find that works really good if you're trying to hovering is to pull a throttle and just blast it, like blip the throttle okay. when the elevator's in the right direction or the rudder's where you oh, need okay. it. Oh, okay, so just pulsate the yeah, throttle? Yeah, just like pulsate it a couple times. You gotta definitely respect it as a bigger plane. Mm -hmm. But it just, It's got weight, it carries, it carries its weight. There you oh, go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, just try pulsing the throttle too when you need to do some. It, t it tends to work really, really good. I like good. it. All right, let's see if I can do a landing without flaps and see if I can actually shoot an approach. All right. It really carries its energy, right? It's funny, I feel like I'm flying a older gasser right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, it's definitely but, comparable in the weights and the wing loading with, with a lot of these older style airplanes. All right, that's terrible right. landing, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, Stefan, you want a lesson? Let's do it. Oh, All boy. right, so Stefan, <laughs> we, we can't say it's good for newbies, but Stefan, you've been flying for what, six months now? Yeah, about that. Awesome. At planes and stuff. So, so we're gonna throw Stefan under the thing. I'm gonna take it up. Anytime you let someone try the sticks, don't let them try to take it off because you're taking it from uh, stall point to fly in, back mm -hmm. to stall point. Get them up three mistakes high. Yep. Whether they're a good pilot or bad, let them feel it in the air, just like what Peter passed off to me. So do you think we have enough battery? I think we got enough. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> throw it up for you. I'm gonna hand it to you. Now, one thing Perfect. you're gonna have to be careful about, if you just start banging around on the rudder. Oh, should we put some Expo in there first? Oh, we can yeah. do it real fast. Yeah, let's do yeah. Expo. So guys, if you're wondering what Expo is, basically what that is, is it's where the center of the stick feels softer. Um, this is flying real touchy right now. Probably 30% Expo is a really good point to go where you have full experience and full control, but it'll be softer. And generally when you're flying, you're only moving the stick about the width of your thumb each way for general flying. It's until you get into aerobatics and 3D that you're really moving a lot more. So if you keep small movements in mind, 30% Expo will give you a really soft uh, motion on your controls. I really appreciate that, guys. You're welcome. Really nice. You know, ironically, too, <laughs> if you remember our one of our episodes from the past, the Otter episode, you had no Expo, no nothing. I just gave you, oh, really? I gave you the oh, whole the cold machine, yeah, I That's appreciate that. Yeah. Come around a little more, pull up. Oh, watch out for the trees. Watch out for that tree. Oh, it's in the tree. Oh, it's in the tree. I forgot about that. Awesome. So we roll. So there's a couple ways. <laughs> Normally there's something called adverse <laughs> on. When the one aileron goes up, it's going to bank this way, but it's causing more drag. 
Okay. And so that drag is actually, I'm sorry, the, the aileron that goes down causes more drag. So it banks this way, but this is more drag and it kicks the nose this way. Okay. All right, so when you bank on these bigger planes that are scale, you sometimes get this. You gotta follow with just a touch of rudder. Okay. The easiest way is when you're flying, keep the sticks just a little parallel. Ah, nice. Now you guys can program this with a mix and we even have an episode on that, uh, but it's good to learn it this way because if you program it, you lose a lot of the cool yeah. things you can do in the air. And it makes you a better pot if you learn right yeah. off the bat. It's yeah. kind of like the whole thing with there's versus the three channel, four channel debate. That's, another, that's a subject for an entirely different yeah. video. But people <laughs> people yell at each other all the time. But I personally like you to learn everything kind of at once. Yes. But slowly let you and let you make all the mistakes you want so you learn quicker. If you right. want to have an airplane where you really feel uh, the need for putting rudder in, build a storch. Storches are really good for that. All right, I'm going to take it up. All right. Two or three mistakes high. We're going to hand it off to you. It takes off pretty quickly. It takes off great. And the funny thing is it has so much power, you can cruise around at half throttle all day long. Yeah, really. This is Because this is a success machine. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Which is basically six cells. So. I do like the fact that they give you the ability to, to series up two, two connectors mm -hmm. or two batteries. Yeah, so That's you can use two cool. common batteries. All right, so Stefan. The unfortunate part is that, that you guys have been flying to the right all day. I, I don't know about the right turns. You no, know you can saying? do a left turn. You're good, <laughs> Stefan. All right, all right, there you go. The plane is right there. <laughs> so just pretend it's the Otter, but bigger, more expensive, doesn't fly in water, things like that. Non repairable. Yeah. <laughs> How's it feel? Feel great. Now, what have you flown in the past here? Uh, I've flown a Storch, um, a Mini Scout, and a Versa Wing. You flew a Bloody Wonder, too. Flew a Bloody Wonder, that's right. Bloody Wonder yeah. and a Bloody Baron. Okay, cool. So, what does this feel like to you? This feels a little bit more like the Storch, I would say, a bit more. Just storchy in, goodness? Just Storchy, Starchy, Storchy goodness, man. Cool. Dude, this is... You're doing good. It's a faster Storch. With a lot more inertia and more money too. <laughs> right? No, I, I heard that, man. <laughs> so only, the, the weird thing 300. about this is when you get to heavier airplanes, you know, generally when you stall on like the Storch or, or one of our light planes, mm -hmm. you know, you immediately have lift again. Yep. And they, they're just, they get a little mushy. This guy can go into full stall, it will drop a wingtip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to maintain your speed. At all and, times. At all times. Doesn't mean you fly fast. Right. It means you cruise. And then when you get just above the ground, you start bleeding off that speed slowly. And there's nothing wrong with the walk of shame. You know, it's better to take a walk and get your plane than to have people have to help you pick up pieces. Right, I heard that. And it's also safer too if you fly past you because then <laughs> you're not, you know, using the controls towards it's you. It's super, super stable. Yeah. Which is phenomenal. You want to try landing? Ooh. I, uh, Let's see it. We, we could. All right. Let's see the stuff in landing. So take it, take it down there. You got it. You got it, man. Relax that throttle, let the nose drop a little bit. Now try not to hit the trees if you can too. And we're going to come straight oh, back I, I see, towards you know what, this, right? I see he's, He's, yeah, you know what, you, you want to turn left, you're going to have to possibly turn right. What? You know, or we can say tune in next time when Stefan turns right. Can I bring it in now? Well, the problem is you want to land into the yeah, wind. You, you oh, can't, that's, that's right. Thing too, yeah. Okay. You'll get blown down the runway. All right, well then uh, we're going to have to go right then, huh? Yep. Yeah. Keep that's going that okay. way. Righty tighty, lefty right. loosey. Now you can turn right. The, the only difference with going right compared to left is you're going right instead of left. All right, back off here in the throttle. Let your nose drop naturally. Don't try to milk it. Keep Pull your throttle all the way down. All right, do another turn to the right. All right. Keep little going. more throttle again. A little more throttle. Yeah. A little more power. A little more. There you go. All right, keep that keep that altitude right there. That's great. That's good. All right. So what you're doing is you're pitching that nose up. Go ahead and fly down further a little bit yeah. more. Give yourself more room down there. There you go. Now go ahead and let your nose drop subtly, slightly. Throttle back. Ooh. You're doing good. All right. Take it all the way back now. Yeah. Hold throttle. Yep. Yep. Just hold where you are. Just keep that Beautiful. sink rate and you'll be on the ground in a second. Don't push back yet. See how she does off road. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, All right. That was awesome. Good job. <laughs> Wasn't the greatest, but hey, I'm, one, I'm proud one, of you, man. It's, one it's, for one you can reuse the airplane, so it's a better exactly. landing. Exactly. Right, yeah. too. Exactly. I and missed the whole runway, but it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> didn't realize how easy it was to just cut throttle and let it glide in. Yeah, the biggest thing is when you cut throttle, you know, when you're flying off the prop, you can fly at a high angle attack. Mm -hmm. When you cut the throttle, you don't want to dive it, but you want to establish a glide slope. Okay. And we even have a good video for glide slopes and things like that, but that means you're not necessarily carrying it nose high the whole time. Because what's happening is you're bleeding off your speed. You want it to actually carry its glide slope, carry it at a nice comfortable speed, and then right when you get above the ground, that's when you start depleting your lift a little okay. bit. Okay. But by no means, if you push it towards the ground, you're going to have too much speed, too much and you're going to start doing this thing. And there's lots of really good YouTube videos of really fancy warbirds where they drive it to the ground and just start, you know, doing that. actually this. reminds me of a, uh, like a first time pilot soloing. He, he, he does that. He, he forces the plane to the ground yeah. and it bounces. 
and he keeps forcing it and people are just like, oh no, go around. And eventually <laughs> he gives up and goes around. Yeah. Wow. So don't do that. Just, just let the wing do the lifting and then bleed it off until it's ready to meet the ground. And hopefully the ground's only about this high from you. Right? All right. So. <laughs> so you know what? This thing is expensive. 400 bucks for the receiver ready kit. You still need your battery. But the fact yep. that you can put two, three cells together mm -hmm. in series is a pretty nice thing. So you're not going to break the bank and you can repurpose your batteries uh, compared to other units where you have to make up a series. Mm -hmm. I just definitely say it's probably eight out of 10. The really, the uh, two points come from, it's really expensive. Yeah, it's, it's a lot right. more than I can generally want to pay for an airplane, but it's a really nice airplane. So yeah, it's yeah. a trade off. And you know what, Multiplex, throw some lights on it next time. Yeah, the lights. The lights. That, that's, that's 50 where the, that's cent LED. <laughs> Just put the lights on. <laughs> All right, friends, we'll see you next time.